Okay, let's take a look at our music um, video, our mystery music video for this week. And it's written by uh, Bob Dylan. And the name of the song is called Hurricane Carter. Okay, so Hurricane Carter uh, was born in 1937 and passes away in 2014. And he was an American-Canadian middleweight boxer who was wrongfully convicted of murder and later released uh, following a petition of habeas corpus after serving almost 20 years in prison. In 1966, Carter and his co-accused John Artis were arrested for a triple homicide, which was committed at the Lafayette Bar and Grill in Patterson, New Jersey. Shortly after the killings at 2.30 a.m., a car which contained Carter, Artis, and a third acquaintance was stopped by police outside the bar while its occupants were on their way home from a nearby nightclub. They were allowed to go on their way, but after dropping off the third man, Carter and Artis were stopped while they were passing the bar a second time, 45 minutes later. Both of them were arrested. Carter and Artis were interrogated for 17 hours, released, then rearrested weeks later. In 1967, they were convicted of all three murders and given life sentences, served in Rahway State Prison, a retrial in 1976, upheld their sentences, but it was overturned in 1985. Prosecutors declined to try the case a third time after their appeal to the Supreme Court failed. Carter's autobiography titled The 16th Round, written while he was in prison, was published in 1974 by the Viking Press. The story inspired the 1975 Bob Dylan song, Hurricane, and the 1999 film, the Hurricane with Denzel Washington playing Carter. From 1993 to 2005, Carter served as executive director of the Association in Defense of the Wrongly Convicted, later rebranded as Innocence Canada. In 2019, the case was the focus of a 13-part BBC podcast series, The Hurricane Tapes. The series was based on interviews which were conducted with survivors, case notes which were taken during the original investigations, and 40 hours of recorded interviews which were conducted with Carter by the author Ken Kolowski, who cited them in his 2011 book, The Eye of the Hurricane. Hurricane Bob Dylan's howl of protest still resonates today. The hard-hitting 1975 ballad tells the story of a black boxer framed in jail for murder. From the Financial Times, John Daly, pistol shots rang out in the barroom night. The opening line of Bob Dylan's protest ballad, Hurricane, sounds more like the start of a classic noir thriller by Raymond Chandler. The song is one of Dylan's most detailed narratives, telling the story of Reuben Hurricane Carter, a black middleweight boxer who was framed by the police for a triple murder that took place in Patterson, New Jersey 
bar in 1966. Dillon discovered the case in 1975 when Carter published his life story, The 16th Round. Intensely moved, the singer traveled to Rahway State Prison to visit the man who, in the words of the song, at one time could have been the champion of the world, but was now an innocent man living in hell. The resulting song was written fast, the collaborator Jacques Levy forming the powerful rhyming lyrics which are unusual among Dylan's ballads for their clarity and structure. In a later interview, Levi said of his role, quote, I think Dylan liked the idea that I could tell a story. Bob was not good at telling stories. He's got a lot of good stuff in his songs, but they don't usually end up to a story. Hurricane definitely adds up to a story. Specific, detailed, hard-hitting. It was recorded in the summer of 1975 with musicians from the Rolling Thunder Review, notably Vinnie Bell on 12-string guitar, powerful drums and percussion, a per percussion from Howie Wyeth, and Luther Ricks, and the most memorably the brilliant gypsy style violin of Scarlett Riviera, whose long swooping musical lines lead a wild exhilarating quality to the counterpoint, the harsh stump of the lyrics. But there were problems. Lawyers at Columbia Records fretted about possible lawsuits, especially from Arthur Dexter Bradley and Alfred Bellow, the two white witnesses who, as the song vividly describes, were cajoled and threatened by the police into identifying Carter and his co-defendant John Artis. A rewritten version had to be recorded, this time with Ronnie Blakely providing the vocal harmony. Even after its release as a single in November 1975 on the Desire album the following year, there was more legal trouble when Patty Valentine, another eyewitness named in the song, brought an unsuccessful lawsuit Accusations of factual errors in the story telling also dogged the ballad. Despite all that, it grabbed the public imagination, combining as it does the passionate rage against injustice in Dylan's protest songs. The feeling ashamed to be alive in a land where justice is just a game with fuel for the race relations ferment of the time in its tale of two black men cynically framed and convicted by white cops, white witnesses, and an all white jury. In December, 1975, Dylan played a concert at New York's Madison Square Garden, raising $100,000 for Carter's defense. And whether or not it had anything to do with the song, in 1976, Carter and Artis were granted a new trial. This was unsuccessful, and it wasn't until 1985 that Carter was finally released from jail. A new judge ruling that the original prosecution had been based on racism rather than reason. By this time, Reuben Hurricane Carter had spent 19 years in jail. So let's take a look at the music video, Bob Dylan's Hurricane Carter. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, lyrics to the song. 
Hurricane Carter by Bob Dylan. And the song starts out with pistol shots ring out in the barroom night. Enter Patty Valentine from the upper hall. She sees the bartender in a pool of blood. Cries out, my God, they killed them all. Here comes the story of the hurricane. The man the authorities came to blame for something that he'd never done. Put in a prison cell, but one time he could have been the champion of the world. Three bodies lying there, does Patty see. And another man named Bello moving around mysteriously. I didn't do it, he said. He throws up his hands. I was only robbing the register. I hope you understand. I saw them leaving, he says, and he stops. One of us had better call up the cops. And so Patty calls the cops and they arrive on the scene with their red lights flashing in a hot New Jersey night. Meanwhile, far away, in another part of town. Reuben Carter and a couple of friends are driving around. Number one contender for the middleweight crown. Had no idea what kind of expletive was going about to go down. Then a cop pulled him over to the side of the road. Just like the time before, and the time before that. In Patterson, that's just the way things go. If you're black, you might as well not show up on the street unless you want to draw the heat. Alfred Bellow had a partner and he had a rap for the cops. He and Arthur Dexter Bradley were just prowling around. He said, I saw two men running out they looked like middleweights. They jumped into a white car with out-of-state plates. And Miss Valentine just nodded her head. Cop said, wait a minute, boys. This one's not dead. So they took him to the infirmary. And though this man could hardly see, they told him that he could identify the guilty man Four in the morning, they haul Reuben in, take him to the hospital, and they bring him upstairs. The wounded man looks up through one dying eye, says, what you bring him in here for? He ain't the guy. Yes, that's the story of the hurricane. The man the authorities came to blame for something that he'd never done put in a prison cell, but one time could have been the champion of the world. Four months later, the ghettos are in flame. Rubens in South America fighting for his name. While Arthur Dexter Bradley's still in the robbery game and the cops are putting the screws to him, looking for somebody to blame. Remember that murder that happened in a bar? Remember you said you saw the getaway car? You think you'd like to play ball with the law? Think it might have been a fighter that you saw running that night? Don't forget that you are white. Arthur Dexter Bradley said, I'm not really sure. Cop said, a poor boy like you could use a break. We gotta go for the hotel job and we're talking to your friend Bello. Now, you don't wanna have to go back to jail, be a nice fellow. You're doing society a favor. Get that expletive. Is brave and getting braver. We want to put his ass in stir. We want to pin this triple murder on him. 
He ain't no gentleman, Jim. Reuben could take out a man with just one punch, but he never did like to talk about it all that much. It's my work, he says. I do it for pay. And when it's over, I just as soon go my own way up to some paradise where the trout streams flow and the air is nice and ride a horse along a trail. But they took him to the jailhouse where they tried to turn a man into a mouse. All of Reuben's cards were marked in advance. The trial was a pig circus. He never had a chance. The judge made Reuben's witness drunkards from the slums. To the white folks who watched, he was a revolutionary bum. And to the black folks, he was just a crazy expletive. No one doubted that he pulled the trigger. And though he could not produce the gun, the DA said he was the one who did the deed and the all-white jury agreed. Reuben Carter was falsely tried. The crime was murder one. Guess who testified? Bello and Bradley, and they both boldly lied. And the newspapers, they all went along for the ride. How can the life of such a man be in the palm of some fool's hand? To see him obviously framed couldn't help but make me feel ashamed to live in a land where justice is just a game. Now, all the criminals in their coats and their ties are free to drink martinis and watch the sun rise, while Reuben sits like Buddha in a ten-foot cell, an innocent man in a living hell. That's the story of the hurricane, but it won't be over until they clear his name and give him back the time he's done. Put in a prison cell, but one time he could have been the champion of the world. Okay, so those are the lyrics to the song Hurricane by Bob Dylan.